Hi everyone, welcome back. This is week 68, I believe, of my social isolation get ready with me's. I think it's 68 because I missed last week, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, for this week, I was picking up some Glam Light palettes in the last month, and I wanted to use a new to me one, which is the Red Velvet Cupcake palette, I think. Oh, it just says cupcake on the back, but it's, it's obviously very much red velvet themed. <laughs> um, so this one opens like the cake palette does, so it's got this little like oven type look and your palette's on the inside. And it's one of these mini size, mini-ish I guess you could say, uh, cardboard palettes. I freaking love the cupcake on the front. It's this like plastic type thing here and the cupcakes are uh, cupcake sprinkles are actually little plastic bits that can move around a little bit in there. It's really sweet. So the inside of the palette looks like this. Um, you know, funnily enough, I was expecting a little bit more red <laughs> out of this palette. Uh, I'm very drawn to red eyeshadow as a whole, so that's really why I went for this palette. But really, there's one red shade, which is that one right there in the middle. The rest of the palette is pretty much pink and purple, so this is what we're going to be using today, uh, and I'm excited to play with it. Oh, I'm also going to be using my Shake Primer that I got from Kat Von D Beauty many months ago. I just haven't run out of my other primers yet, so I haven't opened this one, but I want to give it a shot. So the thing with this is that it's two liquids in here, and you shake it up. It's called the Shake Primer. And they combine and become this absolutely disgusting color that I'm going to put on my eyelids. <laughs> the intent with this is that it's just, uh, I mean, it's an eyeshadow primer, and I've heard people say that it works really well, but I've not tried it. So this is interesting. It's got a bit of a nozzle tip. I'm trying to pull it into focus over here. And you push the button, I think. Do I just, I don't, oh, three drops. We'll try that. And it's, oh, it's so liquid. This is so weird. I think I use way too much though. There's a lot on the back of my hand still. Uh, okay everywhere. Should have put on my fingertip though. And I believe it's supposed to dry down relatively quickly. That one dry it? Oh, it's a little bit tacky. I'm going to let it dry down a little bit. Uh, let me explain to you where I've been the last week, if, if you noticed. If not, not a big deal. Um, it's been a rough two weeks. So I got my second COVID shot. Fantastic. Happy to be fully vaccinated right now. The next day and almost into the day after was atrocious. So we're mixing vaccines here in Canada. You can get Pfizer first and then Moderna the second. Um, it's just totally dependent on supply. So but when I went to go get my shot, I guess it was, it was only a week ago. Okay, I'm losing track of time here. I got my second shot Friday, like a week and a half ago. Anyway, Saturday, but Friday night was fine. Saturday, <laughs> I haven't been this sick in a long time, okay? I had a fever of almost 101. It was 100.5, which is weird that I do temperature for the body in Fahrenheit, but that's what I grew up with. Uh, I, let me see my notes here. I had chills starting at 7 a.m. and I'm like, I, this something's up. So I had horrific chills. I had to put like four extra blankets on the bed to sleep uh, so I could get warm. I had a fever about 100.5. And then the vomiting started <laughs> and then I had headaches. It was a horrific day, okay? Like I have not had a fever in probably like, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years. Certainly I don't remember any from, unless I was like a teenager and like had whooping cough or something, strep throat, who knows. Um, I could barely move. I was in bed the entire day. The whole day was shot. Like I, I couldn't even barely watch TV. And I've had this conversation with friends recently where it's like, how sick do you have to be where you can't actually play video games? Because you know, if you're home at, if you're home sick from work, generally you feel crummy, but you're somewhat functional and you can play video games. I was so sick I couldn't play video games, okay? That's how I defined how sick I was. I was in bed the entire day. I watched some garbage TV, um, but even then I had to keep turning it off because I just couldn't focus, I had to sleep. And then the next day, it was kind of wearing off, but it was still a little bit there. The fever had dropped, thankfully, but I was just like, this is nuts, <laughs> absolutely nuts. And on top of that, I'll get into the makeup in a minute. We got horrible news about my cat Nemo. And this is part of the reason I didn't want to film. I combined with feeling 
horrible from this shot experience, which is fine, I'm happy to have it, no complaints there. I felt so miserable physically and drained emotionally to get news that my cat is back to stage four kidney disease was just like soul destroying at the same time. So I'm dealing with physical illness that is horrible, it just felt really garbage. And then emotional trauma from finding out that my cat is doing really poorly. We had to take him back into the vet. He's on, he's on so many things. He's on anti-nausea. He's on antibiotics. He's had another ultrasound. He um, is taking, I think it's called erythropoine uh, because his liver is not producing enough of that. So we need to give him shots in order to keep him functional from that perspective. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. I am not keeping my cat alive for my own sake. We're trying to make sure that he's happy and healthy and we need to get to the bottom of how to help his kidneys function to make sure that he's having a fulfilling life. I'm saying it that way because I really don't like when owners keep their cats alive for their own sake. Um, but I'm all, <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous to say outside. I'm also not looking to kill my cat, okay? I love him so much. Like, so, so I, the amount of tears I've cried over this cat, okay? I love him so much. Um, but I want him to feel okay. And if I can fix that with drugs and medication to make sure that he's having a fulfilling life still, I will do that. Um, but if it's past the point of no return, then I wanna make sure that he goes peacefully. Um, how I'm holding together on camera right now is a miracle because every time this comes up, talking to the vet, talking to my husband, I'm like just pouring my eyes out with tears. Um, so he's perked up now because the shots are working. We're hoping the antibiotics are gonna work. There's nothing new in the ultrasound that was discovered other than the fact that his kidneys are still the same size, but they're oddly misshapen. And there appears to be a lump that they saw before back in December, um, but they don't know what it is. They, they originally ruled out that it was uh, malicious, so it was benign, um, but now it's still the same size, it hasn't moved, nothing's happened, but they're like, well, maybe it could be something. So we don't know, but we're trying to resolve the fact that his kidneys are kind of failing on him. So it's been an awful week, okay? <laughs> it's been really, really, really awful. And just when I think that we're, you know, getting out of this, we're getting out of COVID, I've got my second vaccine, my cat is doing like horrifically. So I'm gonna move on now but I want to give some backstory. I've been talking for so long about this. Okay. And also, you know, when a cat is like not eating and just not drinking enough, it's obviously not healthy. He was hiding under the bed, yada, yada. It was just, he's better now, but it's been a garbage, garbage time in this household. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to makeup. So Glam Light, I guess it's just the cupcake palette. I'm still going to call it the Red Velvet Cupcake palette. So I do want to focus on purple as opposed to pink and some red. Uh, what am I gonna start with? Okay, I'm gonna start with Buttery up here and use that as a transition color. You know, I really thought there would be more red in this palette. How did this dry down? Oh, it's a little bit tacky. Okay, let's see how this goes. I'm not using another primer today. I'm just gonna use that one and see how it goes. So yeah, the vet builds have also been through the roof, but honestly, I'll do anything to make sure that this cat is as healthy as he can be. So it's just been a little bit bracing, that's all. Although honestly, it couldn't, to look on the silver lining side of things, it could not have happened during a better time, right? Where <laughs> all at home, saving more money than normal. So I've definitely got more liquid cash, I guess you could say, because I'm not going out all the time. Actually, on that note, Ontario is starting to open up restrictions. I think they went I don't remember, I don't know all the phase names because we've gone back and forth on phase two, phase three, phase four, lockdown, blah, 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 over the last year and a half, but I don't know where we're at. But on June 30th, they opened up, I think it was patio dining um, and a few other things. So we weren't in lockdown anymore. And there's more restrictions that are gonna be lifted, I think, in coming weeks, dependent on how everything is sort of rolling out with the double vaccine. Um, the increase in doubly, doubly vaccinated people. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy in that respect. I am hopeful that things are going well. And that's mostly honestly derived from the fact that I have my second vaccine shot. So I feel good. Um, 
why I'm worried that, you know, like once again, we'll go back into lockdown. <laughs> Okay, so for the lid, I think I wanna take Dazzling here, but I'm gonna wet my flat shader brush first. I've got some Fix Plus here that I'm just going to spray onto it. I usually do a pretty thick spray. <laughs> some people are like, oh, just dust it on, or mist it onto your brush. I'm like, no, let's make it as soaked as possible so I get a good pigmentation. Uh, and I find, honestly, with the texture of the Glam Light um, shimmers, it's better to wet your brush just because they're, they're packed in there a little bit more. So yeah, things are opening back up. I haven't honestly been on a patio. Wow, that's pretty. Um, I haven't been in a restaurant since like March 2020. Um, I actually have friends with my plan Julie in a few weeks. We're gonna go to Cruise and Tango, which is a drag bar here in Toronto. Um, I'm gonna hang out on the patio and watch some drag at the bar. It, normally it's a bar where we'd be inside, but they do have a patio space. So they're opening that up for people to come and have drinks and food and stuff like that. So I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, this kind of came out of the blue too, but uh, my soccer is starting back up again. So I play on a queer friendly league in Toronto called Downtown Soccer Toronto. And I've been playing in that league probably like, I don't know, 15, 16 years. Like it's been a really long time. Um, and they've decided to open up the season halfway through so like mid-july and they're gonna start having games again and i'm super pumped about it because ugh, i've missed soccer so much but i'm also like i'm so out of shape like <laughs> thankfully they're doing shorter games than normal 60 minutes as opposed to 90 but it's gonna be rough going when we get back out on the field Thing I'm really looking forward to though is when gyms finally open back up. That is the thing where I'm like, please give me the gyms. And now that I have my shot, I'm less concerned about having to go to public places, which I hope is a good thing to not be frightened about now. But everybody keeps talking about that other variant that's like highly transmissible, and I'm like, oh no. Uh. Okay, with the lid color on, I'm then gonna go into the red shade here, which honestly, there's not that many deep colors in this palette. Like that's not deep, that's mostly just bright. I guess the purple over here is probably the deepest color. They could have really done with some deeper shades in here for sure. So putting that on the outer corner and dragging it through my crease. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing soccer. I'm also very excited because before last year's season, I had bought new cleats because my old ones were finally just giving up the ghost and uh, I never got to use them. <laughs> so I'll have to dig those out, all my other stuff. I'm for sure gonna have to buy new shorts though. There is no way that two years ago's soccer shorts fit me. There's no way. Oh, and the nice thing about this league too is that they're not charging anybody for the season, which is amazing. You can donate if you want, um, but they've just decided to not charge people for the season. It's not even that expensive generally. It's around, I know the price has gone up. It might be closer to like 200 bucks now, but it used like 10 years ago, it only cost $100 to play in this league, which is amazing. Because most of the competitive soccer that I played in, the fees were like 600 bucks, which in terms of competitive sports is very cheap, but... Um, to play at a, a recreational soccer league and have them only charge around $200 is very nice. And for this year, nothing at all. Okay, I like the colors, but the red is not blending into the purple very well. So I think I'm gonna take this shade here called Decadent, which is a really hot, <laughs> shimmery pink. And on that wet brush that I used before for the purple, I'm just gonna put it in between the red and the purple to try to get a little bit of a better transition going on there. I hope this doesn't cause the matte shade to lift though. Yeah, it's a bit better, I think. This shade on its own is really amazing. I stuck my finger in it earlier and I couldn't believe it. Look at that color. That's amazing. <laughs> And then for the inner corner of the eye, I'm going to be taking 
cream cheese. So I use this one dry actually and it's pretty pigmented still. Hmm. Maybe I don't have to wet my brush after all. For the lower lash line, I think I'm going to play a little bit more with the purple. So uh, let's see. I think I'm going to take this Revlon Vinyl, so fierce, so, yeah, so fierce Vinyl Eyeliner in the shade Powerful Plum. Put that on my waterline first. And I'm going to take this Kisses Purple on a pencil brush. And then to blend out that purple, I'm going to take uh, Confection over here. And just put that at the very edges of the shimmer. This is certainly a weird color combination for me. I'm not sure how much I like this. But you know, wing liner and lashes usually help, so let me add that. You know, while I'm putting on my lashes here, I don't love the inner corner goldness compared to the rest of the look, so I've got my lashes drying here. I'm gonna take the shade Cake Mix and put that on the inner corner. Let's see if that fixes some of this. Might be too hard now with the the strong gold. Well, oh, took it down a little bit. Oh, that's better. Okay, that certainly helped to bring the look together a little bit better. Uh, let's move on to the face. I'm using the same combination that I did before that seemed to work really well, which is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation in the shade 51 Light Vanilla, and then Boots Number no. 7 Instant Radiance in the shade Cool Ivory. So in other great news, because I was not looking forward to traveling anytime soon, um, the flights that we had booked to, uh, it's hair floating everywhere, uh, Norway for September, which was a rebooking from last year's vacation, uh, we have thankfully been able to cancel that and get a travel credit for Iceland Air, which is who we we're going to be flying with, to use at any point within the next three years. I am so relieved. <laughs> um, I mean, the money had already been spent uh, I hadn't booked anything but the flights, so it's not like, you know, I had money outstanding for hotels or cars or anything like that. Um, but I mean, I don't like to waste a few thousand dollars, so <laughs> I'm really happy that we were able to get a travel credit for the exact same amount of money that we paid for the airline tickets um, to be used at our discretion, whatever we should like in the next three years. So happy about that because um, not only am I not really comfortable traveling right now, I also don't want to be away from Nemo, my cat. Uh, because he's not doing very well and I'd probably have to check him into a cat hotel at the vet while we were gone and I would just feel not good if something were to happen to him while it was out of the country. So um, thankfully that's not a problem that I now have to deal with. I can go on vacation at some other point in the next three years and not think about it right now. I really didn't think I was going to get that travel credit back either because it had been postponed for a year already and I think they had said at the time, like, you know, this is it. Like, you can't extend it past this. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll just see. And if I have to lose a few thousand dollars, so be it. I'd rather be healthy in my own country. Um, but again, not an issue now. So I'm very, very relieved about that. Oh, and randomly too, I got another uh, email from Porter Airlines. Because the week that COVID hit, I was actually supposed to be going to Ottawa to visit my parents back in March 2020 and like the day before I cancelled my flight uh, in lieu of a credit with uh, Porter Airlines because traveling <laughs> was not recommended at the time and uh, they said you know we'll keep your credit whatever um, you can use it at a later time. I got an email this past week too to say that uh, I can either get a full refund for that flight amount now or I can keep a credit with Porter Airlines with an additional 25% attached to it and I'm like that's not a bad deal because I go back and forth between Ottawa all the time and I always take Porter Airlines because it is so nice to fly to Ottawa as opposed to driving. Because driving, it used to be four hours from Toronto. It's not. It's somehow like five hours and change now. The traffic has just gotten so bad on the 401 um, that 
now instead I've opted for flying and honestly it sounds really bougie to say oh I'll just fly instead of drive uh, I don't have a car so <laughs> anytime I have to go to Ottawa if I was driving I have to rent a car anyway so it, I think it actually works out to be cheaper to fly to Ottawa um, than it is to drive because the car rentals are close to I don't know what 60 bucks a day let's say I go for four days plus gas yeah it, it's cheaper to fly <laughs> Because I think the flight, in case I haven't already mentioned this to Ottawa, is only usually around like 250 bucks. Taxes in, Canadian. Uh, sometimes I can think you can find it a little bit cheaper, but yeah, it's not it's not too expensive compared to renting a car. Plus the time savings. It's like a 30, 45 minute flight. Okay, for bronzer, I'm gonna be using my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This thing will never die. I'm so close to being done. So yeah, I wonder if we'll be going to my parents for Christmas this year. We usually go back and forth between um, my parents in Ottawa and my husband's parents in Wisconsin. I think our last one, last Christmas that we traveled was to Wisconsin. And then, yeah, I think we had to cancel last year because COVID. So I think it's their turn now. And for blush, I'm gonna use one I haven't pulled out in a long time. It's the Elizabeth Mott Tints and Sass. I think I got this in an Ipsy bag quite a few years ago. Whatever happened to subscription boxes? I feel like no one talks about them anymore. So I just dot that on my face, take a dual fiber brush, this one's by e.l.f. and then blend it out. Now, I don't think I ever subscribed to a ton of them. I did Ipsy for a while um, until I realized that I was only getting like black eyeliner all the time. And I'm like, okay, just how many black eyeliners do I need? <laughs> and I know I did Fortune Cookie Soap for a while. They had really cool products. Um, but over time, I just I think I discontinued that because I just didn't need to spend the money on more and more product. But I never did like the FabFitFun boxes, although I know a lot of people love those. Those are probably the more enticing ones right now. Um, but I don't really need like an additional monthly bill lately. <laughs> okay, uh, blush is on for highlighter. I'm pretty sure I used this last uh, week, but I'm gonna use it again anyway because it's really pretty and it fits the theme of this. It's the Kaleidos Mars Melter. Beautiful, beautiful shade. That never translates properly on camera. And that is the face done. I'm gonna throw my brows on and I'll come back and we'll do the lips. All right, on to the lips. I have two new to me ones by Revlon here. Um, they're kind of like a sheer formula, which is nice. So these are the new Revlon Super Lustrous Shine Formula. So I've got Cherries in the Snow, which I have in like a cream formula version of them. And then Love is On. I think Love is On is probably gonna work a little bit better, but let's take a look. So Love Is On is more red. Let's see what that looks like here. It's got a nice gloss sheen to it. <clears throat> and then Cherries in the Snow. Let's see. Hmm. Kind of want a combination between the two colors. <laughs> Maybe the pink's actually going to work a little bit better, but let's see. So this is Cherries in the Snow. Okay, let me put Love Is On on top and see what happens. Yeah, I like the red better. Okay, let me clean this mess up and try that again. So yeah, Love Is On, the more red one. Oh, this is a nice formula. It's basically a gloss stick, to be honest. So I doubt the longevity is gonna be very good because it is very slippery. So I put the Love Is On shade on and then I'm taking uh, Cherries in the Snow and just adding a little bit of pink to the center. Because honestly, <laughs> I think both colors actually really work well with this look uh, and I could make up my mind. All right, so this is the finished look with the Glam Light Cupcake Palette. I, <laughs> I'm not sure how much I actually like the eyeshadow look. I think the color combination ended up being not quite what I was going for, um, which isn't to speak negatively of the shadows in here. I do actually quite like, Jesus, 
drop the whole thing. Uh, I do really like the shades in here, although I <laughs> wish there was more red involved, um, just because it's really marketed, as you know, red velvet cupcakes. Um, but the shadows themselves are really nice. I do think there should be a darker shade in here than what they have available. This is all very like bright medium type colors. There definitely needs to be more dark shades overall um, because that red is fairly... The camera just cut off on me so I'm not really sure where that ended but I was just saying that um, I do wish that this palette had a few more darker shades in here because I didn't really have anything to deepen up the outer corner. The red is more bright medium tone than it is actually deep and a dark red would have been really nice or a super dark purple. Although this color is so pretty and I didn't get to play with that one today. Also, these lipsticks are really nice. Super glossy and comfortable feeling. This will transfer everywhere though, for sure. And I think this might over time actually end up on my teeth. So make sure that you're like, blotting down the center of your lip if you're gonna be wearing those Revlon lipsticks. That being said, I'm always like super happy with Revlon lipsticks. There's something about their formula that it's just always, it's always really good. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave it there for week 68. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.